Today, I wanna to talk about how to be a boss at prospecting. Whether you're in sales like me, marketing, you run a business, prospecting effectively is essential for success. So if you're ready to become a pro at finding, connecting with, building relationships with potential customers, then let's get started. My name is Trent Russell. I've been working in software sales for nearly five years. I promoted my way up at the same tech company from an entry-level sales development rep to a senior account executive, six promotions, four X my income, 60,000 completed cold calls. And today I'm gonna to tell you a story about how I cold called one prospect, a VP at one of my accounts, 47 times over the course of two years to eventually set the meeting with them, get their attention, build the relationship, and ended up selling them a $20,000 annual recurring revenue software package. The four lessons I'm gonna talk about here today, and the fourth lesson is persistent, consistent follow-up. I'll tell you about my sequence, how often I follow up, and the mindset and the strategies you can use to break through any barrier to gain contact with the customers you're reaching out to. Step number one, is to define who is your customer, who has your money. And we're gonna talk about sales in the context of B2B today, business to business. You may be doing B2C, business to consumer sales. Typically those sales are lower value transactional sales where many of the strategies that we're gonna, we're gonna talk about today don't really apply because you're not really prospecting consumers at scale. You're prospecting companies because they have all the money. You need to define who is your company, who has your money, who is the buyer persona within that company. Imagine if you were a, a geologist and you were gonna go hunt for fossils. Are you gonna go look under dirt in your backyard or are you gonna go fly out to Egypt to find the most fertile dirt with pyramids in the background where you think you're gonna find a T-Rex somewhere in the ground? It's an obvious choice. So when you're prospecting, are you gonna reach out to the companies who have the most money to spend on your product, good, or service, or are you gonna reach out to the companies that have no money to spend? Start out with your ideal customer profile. Ask yourself, what industry of company are you targeting? Do you just sell into financial services or do you sell into hospitality, quick service, hotels, business to business, professional services, consulting? What industry do you sell into? What makeup of company do you sell into? Do you only sell into companies with 500 employees less, 100,000 employees or more? Do you sell into a specific geographic location, meaning you just sell into companies in Dallas, Texas, or do you sell nationwide? Be very specific with what types of companies are your ideal customer profile. And then once you have a very clear list of these companies, maybe you have a book of business, you have 100 companies like I do, and you need to figure out which companies do I reach out to? You wanna start by looking at revenue, who makes the most money, what industry are they in, have, has there been a recent announcement in the news where someone's got funding or maybe there's a new leader in a position that you can sell into? Once you identify these companies, ask yourself who within these companies are your buyer persona? What is the buying department for your solution? Is it marketing folks? Is it IT folks? Is it human resources folks? Once you really understand who it is you're reaching out to, ask yourself what problems do they have? Why would they buy my solution? What do they actually do day to day? And the better you can understand your buyer persona and the companies you're reaching out to, the more success you're gonna have because in step number two, you're going to do your research. You're gonna reach out and figure out, okay, I know the company, I know who I'm supposed to be reaching out to, but who is that actual person in that role I'm reaching out to? The tools I use to be successful in my sales job to prospect, primarily, Salesforce as my CRM, that's my single source of truth. I identify the top companies via my territory planning. I then will use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to go into these companies, and I can do a training on this where I share my screen, so do let me know down below if you guys think this would be helpful, because you go into Navigator, you can actually upload a list of your companies, and then you can start to filter by keyword, and you can look up Vice President of Human Resources, um, chief marketing officer, COO, whatever it may be. You can start to find your titles. You can search in the keywords for the priorities that your solution may help them with. You can even do filters based on change job in the last 90 days, prospects who follow your company on LinkedIn. The more research you're able to do and identify who is actually the right person to be speaking with because you do not wanna be in a scenario in which you call in and they say hello and you're like, is this Susie? And they're like, yeah, speaking, and you're, you're already off to a bad start. You wanna have a specific reason as to why you're reaching out to every person, so it requires a little bit of research, and then when I identify that correct person, I'll look them up in Zoom Info to find their direct phone number and email, 
and then I'll add them to a sequence in outreach. And this manages my calls and emails. A lot of people ask me about my sequences, what I use in outreach, what it looks like. And that takes us into step number three. And this is personalizing your outreach and, and doing an omni-channel approach. So in outreach, I add prospects to a sequence which is basically calls, emails, calls, emails. Some people like to do LinkedIn requests. Some people like to do send them a handwritten note. Some people like to do send them a video message, whatever it may be. There's a lot of different channels when we say omni-channel, but it just means reaching out to the prospect in different ways. As you think about omni-channel in your life, you're looking at your phone, you're looking at the TV, you're looking at billboards, you're looking at other people's screens. That's omni-channel. You wanna be everywhere at once and it applies to sales. So when I'm reaching out to a prospect, my sequence day one, manual email. I'm gonna customize it based on my research. Later day one, call. Day two, automated email. Day three, call. Day five, automated email. So I'm gonna continuously hit these prospects with calls, emails, trying to make the messaging as relevant as possible. I just focus on financial service industries and companies, so banks, credit unions, um, insurance, brokerages, all of these investment firms. So I have messaging specific to this industry so it's as targeted as possible. I'm calling, and here's a pro tip for you guys, bonus. I'm, I'm sending in, I, I, the first step is actually a call and I will leave them a voice message and say, hey, this is Trent from Insert Company. I wanna share with you what my team has to offer. I will be sending you an email with the subject line, Trent from Insert Company name. No need to call me back take a look at the information and let me know if you have availability so that I can share how we can help your team specifically. Hang up. And then you send the email referencing specifically the messaging you had just said. It's gonna lead to increased open rates for your emails and ultimately more success because more folks will see your messaging, you'll get their attention so that you can hopefully catch them at the right place at the right time. That takes us into step number four, which is follow up consistently. You wanna follow up consistently and this takes us into the story. I identified a credit union with, I think it was 15 billion assets under management, 500 employees, perfect fit for what I have to sell. So I went into my LinkedIn sales navigator, I typed in Vice President of Human Resources, the prospect came up, I added him to my sequence, and I called him, I called him, and you know that feeling when you call someone and you know exactly what their voice message sounds like. That's the point you want to get to when their receptionist is thinking, this guy again, hey, you, you, you really got to stop calling. Or you've heard their voice message so much that you're thinking about the way they talk in your free time. That's when you know you're truly getting to a frequency, a volume to the point where you're going to break through. And New one of Newton's laws, with every force, there's an equal, equal and opposite reaction in force. So when you're pushing all of this intensity with consistent follow-up in an account, there's gotta be something on the other side holding you back. And think of it as a dam with a tiny crack with water spurting through. Eventually, all of your pressure is going to burst the dam, it is inevitable. And that's how I view it. I'm willing to call, people, people ask me, they say, Trent, how many times do you follow up? And I say, as many times as it takes, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna keep reaching out because I'm gonna follow up this month, the next month, the next month. Eventually, you're either gonna tell me outright no, and I'm not gonna accept that because you're gonna to have to give me a better reason. Oh, we're using a competitor? Well, hey, I'm not asking you to switch. I just wanna have an introductory call to talk about how we can help and share relevant industry trends. Oh, you have no budget? Well, we're not, we're not talking money anyway. Let's set up a call to talk about what you're doing and how we can help. There's always a reason to meet, so the more certainty you can have around you need to meet with them, they need to meet with you, your solution can help. And that's the mindset I use to call this prospect over 47 times. Here's the best part. I called the director, the person on his team that reports up to him. She told me no on multiple occasions. When I eventually set the meeting with the VP, he looped her into the meeting. So I got into this meeting point blank, having called them over 70 plus times collectively. They never got back to me. And I made a joke about it. I said, guys, I've been calling you for a long, long time and I appreciate you giving me your attention so that we can talk here today. They respected me more because I did not give up and I was resilient. And as you think about what is a boss with prospecting, it's not always about the results. It's not about who gets the most pipeline, who sets the most meetings, who closes the most revenue, who gets paid the most. It's the person that's continuously showing up that's there in the morning, 
headset on, calling before you even get in the office, and that's staying late in the office, finding those extra prospects to call so that you have enough people to consistently reach out to. That's what it's all about, and the rest will take care of itself. And the final point I'll add that real G's and bosses know in prospecting is when they don't feel like prospecting, they prospect anyway. They don't sit around relying on marketing to bring MQCs, inbounds, hoping the reps cost them an op that they can throw in the system. They are hunters. They eat what they kill. They are willing to go out of their way to shed blood, to get told no, to get rejected, to go win the game and set the meetings. It's whatever it takes. Every day I walk into the office and I'm fired up. I'm saying I'm like a gladiator today, proving myself in battle. That is the mentality each and every day. It is a battle for survival. And when you can get to that place mentally, I promise you your prospecting numbers will increase as a result. If you found value in today's video, subscribe to the channel now, hit the like button, comment the sword or a lion to indicate battle, gladiator, war, doing whatever it takes to be successful. I'm gonna put a link below in the description to my cold calling guide if you'd like to go check it out to hear exactly what I say based on making over 60,000 live cold calls. Happy prospecting, happy life.